G'day, I'm Graham from Smart HS, part of the tech team. Today we're going to do a pre-start check on the bike before we take it out on the farm. We might as well make sure that uh, this is the right machine for the job today because you might be using a two-wheeler might be better for stock work. A side-by-side uh, -side could be more suitable for towing a small trailer. Maybe the ute for a large trailer. Or a, perhaps a tractor is going to be more useful. But make sure this is the right machine for the job today and that you've had training to operate it. So okay. Is the machine level as you approach it in the shed? You're going to get a bit of an idea where there's a flat tire or something like that. So as you approach the machine, before you even start checking, check its level. And have a look underneath the machine as you come in as well. And you might spot an oil leak or maybe a water leak and it'll solve a few issues further down the line if you can get straight onto those straight away. But the first part of the T-clock, T-C-L-O-C, is checking the tires. Tires and wheels. So make sure that the tyre has got a sufficient tread today for the job that you're doing and the conditions you're going to be operating in. Is there any cuts or damage to the tyre inside and outside? And is there any dirt jammed in the rim? Is there any dents in the rim? There could be sticks jammed in here as well. Check your nuts are tight on all the wheels, even the centre nuts. So make sure those things are all in good condition. And one of the most important things is checking your tyre pressure. This gauge you can pick up from uh, the shops in town. For It's a 0 to 15 PSI gauge and it's reasonably accurate. This little fella comes in the toolkit, usually free on most of the bikes. It's 0 to 5 PSI and is very, very accurate. So don't get a gauge with too high a pressure like 60 PSI because it won't really measure it properly. But what you're looking for is even pressure across an axle. So if this tyre is 3 PSI, that one has to be as well. At the front, if it's 4 PSI on one side, the other side has to be 4 PSI. Sometimes they're all even all the way around, but sometimes they're different. Check your manual, check your dealer what he thinks, your boss, or um, have a look in the manual. Okay, so we've done the tyres and wheels. But as we go and ride around the bike, we may as well not waste any time. So as we go from one corner to the next side, let's have a look at the chassis. And we're looking for damage, cracks, and uh, loose bolts and whatnot. So give it a bit of a shake and see what's coming loose on these bolts. See whether these swing arms right up the front there, whether they're actually loose and wobbling, whether the things are out. Of, oh, we've got some twine in here wrapped around the drive shaft, so we'll get all that off. Get that out of there. Looking for things like that. Okay, so that's your chassis. Tow ball, strong, sticking on there good, not loose, and the right size for the trailer. So we'll move on around the front here. We gave the shape back a shake. We better be kind and give the front a shake. So what we're looking for here is these bolts, front and back, top and lower, and these joints right out here. If there's any looseness in those as we shake it, both sides. So um, yeah, and then these CV boots here. So the CV boots, these rubber boots here, inner, outer, if they've got any cuts and grease is getting out of them, that's gonna cause a major cost down the line whereas they're very cheap to replace. Over here we've got a stick jammed in so we better pull that out of there and make sure because that would cut that CV boot quite easily. Looking for any damage, any loose parts, any rust, having a good look at the chassis. There's another part of the chassis we're going to have a look at which is under the seat. There could be pipe frame under here cracked, there could be damage to things, there could be loose battery, anything. So we'll take that seat off, it's where you usually find you. Oh we've got a bird's nest. Take that out of there, get rid of all this hay and stuff because that's right over top of the exhaust that's coming through here and that would have caught on fire. In bird season, keep an eye on all your machines for that. Is the battery secure? Here's your little tool kit with your tyre pressure gauge in it usually. And in under here is your air filter, which if you're in very dusty conditions, you want to be checking out at least once a week. But if you're not in dusty conditions, it might be a month or you might even get away till the next service if you're in hardly any dust at all. No cracks or damage under there, and we've done the chassis. Next thing to check is your lights and electrics. To get your lights going, we need to turn the light switch on, come around the back, and just check that we've got good illumination at the back, because if you're in foggy conditions, out on the road, crossing to the runoff or whatever, you want to be able to be seen from behind. If you've got a trailer on, you want to make sure that they see the um, reflectors on the trailer. Up front here, you want to be able to see where you're going and want other pe people to see you're coming as well. So lights are pretty important. Not just the only ones with your headlights or tail lights though, you've got more lights in the middle of the machine here, which is like your neutral light. 
your ignition light and your reverse light for when you, however you select reverse, that light will come on and warn you that you're in reverse. But you don't really see it when you're sitting at a gateway you've just backed up from to open it and you're ready to go forward again. So I've installed a buzzer here that warns me that I'm actually in reverse. Otherwise I hit the gas and I go flying backwards and I'm expecting to go forwards through the gateways. Okay, so lights and electrics. If we're going to do, we need to know that our um, machine will start up. Part of our electrics. Yep, so it's actually idling nicely. Have we got a horn that works? Not until we turn the key on. Cool. That's our lights and electrics. Oil and fuel. Down one side of the machine or the other is going to be a little oil um, dipstick. Get a rag and wipe away the muck away from the top of the dipstick before you actually wind it out because you need to get it out and give it a wipe before you actually dip it. So wind it all the way out, give it a, a wipe with your rag and then with these Japanese bikes, Honda, Kawasaki, Yamaha, Suzuki and so on, you just sit it on top and measure it. Give it a wipe, if you want to check it again, just sit it on top and measure it. And you know that you've got oil there sufficient for the day. With some of the American models, you have to wind it all the way in like I am now, and then wind it all the way out to get the level. But check with your dealer, check with your um, bike shop, check with your manual or your boss what is the right way to do it. We're going to do fuel, we're going to pull out the airline, we can wind that right out and have a look in. Yep, we've got fuel, otherwise you might have a fuel gauge. This airline, you don't want it getting twisted up because if it gets bent, it will not allow the air to take the fuel out. Down the side here, we've got a uh, reserve tank. Turn it on to reserve when you run out in the paddock, but make sure it's not on reserve when you've got a full tank of fuel because otherwise when you run out, you'll run completely out and not get home. Good idea to have a little filter on underneath here. You can install those yourselves or get the dealer to do it because when you're filling off jerry cans or tanks, it can get quite dirty and that filter will take away any problems. Okay, so we've done oil and fuel. So far we've done tyres and wheels, we've done the chassis, we've done the lights and electrics, we've done the oil and fuel. The last thing to do now is to check out the cables and controls. So we're ready to get on this machine now, set up our personal protective equipment. One of the most important things is your helmet. You can wear this in the cow shed, you can wear this all day, you can get earmuffs on them, you can do all sorts of things. But when you come onto the bike, mount from this side, three points of contact, one, two, plus your foot, swing your leg over this way onto the machine. If your foot jams down onto something on this side because you crashed down on it, it's only the brake. If you're swinging from your side and crash down, you could break the gear lever off. They're pretty fragile, so be gentle with them. So we're checking the cables and controls here. Check the steering. There isn't excessive looseness or movement in it. Check the headstock bearings forward and back aren't knocking because that would indicate a bearing problem. We're going to be checking the front brake. It's good and doesn't pull too far in and actually holds nicely. The fluid level in the reservoir is correct. That tells us that the disc brakes haven't worn out. It's at the right level. The rear brake, it's adjusted nicely on the cables and it's got a nice handbrake lock in there and that's holding the bike quite nicely. Okay, to check out a few more things, we need to start it up. Key on, start a button, and away she goes. Horn working, tilt switch working, yes. High and low beam working. And four wheel drive, two wheel drive, whichever suiting the needs you're in for today. And once it's warmed up a little bit, give the um, throttle a little bit of a rev to make sure that it returns from full throttle, it doesn't jam on. So it springs back nicely, that's cool. Turning the handlebars full lock to the left, not stretching the cable around and making it rev. Stretch the full line that way, not stretching the cable and making it rev. While you're out there, make sure that these brakes and levers aren't hitting anything up front here like boxes or containers, but if you hit a box there, it's going to jam down and throw you off. So everything clear, everything secure on here, and nice. Okay, dismounting, getting off this side. Three points of contact again. Don't swing your leg through here and snap things off. Just do it nicely. Coming around the machine. Good last check over it. Make sure it's washed before you check it. It's much easier to do. And here's a summary of what we've been doing. Is this the right machine for the job? Is the machine level? Is there fluid on the ground? T-C-L-O-C. You'll find that on the SmartHS website, part of the training module. And we have a pre-start check on all of our machines. 
tractors, quads, side-by-sides, and motorbikes. Have a great day, team. Keep safe out.